So this brings us to the question of what is the universe made up of? <clears throat> and what its density is? So we like to know two things in this section. We like to take the universe, take a certain distance, and estimate the mass of everything we can visualize in there. And then it says mass equals mass of all the galaxies in that space. We can add up all the gas in that space. We can add up any dark matter in that space. We can estimate the mass of dark matter by its effects. We can't really see dark matter, but we can tell its effects. We can estimate the mass of dark matter and anything else in that space. We can calculate the volume, 4 thirds pi r cubed is the volume of that space. And then we can calculate mass, mass over volume. And then we can find out how dense the universe is. This will give us the average density of the universe. Just take a certain volume, estimate the mass of objects, divide the mass by the volume. And then you can now go twice the volume, estimate the mass of everything there, divide it by the volume, and then you can come up with the density. So if this density is equal to some critical value, okay, then its shape will be flat. In other words, the density that makes up the matter in the universe, the dark matter and everything, determines whether or not the shape of the universe is flat. Or is it positively curved or is it negatively curved? This density is written as omega zero. Omega zero. All measurements of the shape of the universe so far using the COBE satellite. Remember I showed you the picture that COBE sent and uh, with the, the fluctuations, the hot spots and all that. Now, since the COBE, COBE operated from roughly around 1995, uh, around 1990 to uh, 1998, 1999, something like that, in the 1990s. After that, another satellite called the WMAP, WMAP was sent out. It operated from roughly around 2000 to 2009, okay, 2010, something like that. And then after that, we have another satellite called the Planck satellite, Planck probe. These three, their main goal is to map out the cosmic microwave background and determine the size of those hot spots and also determine the structure of the universe and its density, okay? All, all of them so far have revealed that the shape and property of the universe is flat, okay? So that means it's the, the number of galaxies increases linearly, hot spots appear just as big as they should appear, um, circle makes a diameter, it's equal to 3.14. So all of those shapes, that the properties that we know of, they have determined that it's pretty close to flatness. These are the pictures of these satellites, COBE satellite, WMAP satellite, okay? Looks like this, and the Planck satellite. These are the kinds of pictures they send back. You might say, big deal, who cares? I mean, what's this, what's this, what's that? What can you tell? This can tell you a lot about what the universe is, but of course you have to have a trained mind to know what you're looking for. What the heck does this mean? Well, based on these pictures and all the data that we're getting back, we can determine the density of the universe, how old the universe is. We can determine the Hubble constant. All of those things, you can't believe it. They can determine all that, you know. <clears throat> so that means what? That means the density of the universe is equal to its critical density because we know that it's flat from our measurements, okay? So our measurements are telling us that it's flat. Therefore, its density is equal to the critical density. Therefore, the, this density, the omega zero number, is approximately one, okay? So if you look at this, it will already show us Let 
You see, density parameter, omega zero. That's the one right there. What is it? The combined mass density of all forms of matter and energy in the universe divided by the critical density. You see? So omega zero, therefore, is the density that we're getting once we do this calculation and we're dividing it by the critical density, all forms of matter and energy. What is the value? 1.02 but with an uncertainty of 0.02. That means the universe is pretty much equal to the critical density, therefore it's flat. 1.02 plus minus 0.02, okay? But what portion of that density is made up of normal matter? That's the other question. What portion of the density is made up of matter that we know of, that I can feel, touch, that planets are made of, that stars are made of? What portion of that matter is made up of energy? Electromagnetic energy. What portion of that is made up of dark matter? And what portion of that is made up of dark energy? You see? That's the next question. So according to this one, matter density parameter, lambda m, combined mass density of all forms of matter in the universe divided by the critical density. Okay? 0.24, 24%. Density parameter for ordinary matter, lambda b. Ma mass density of ordinary atomic matter in the universe divided by the critical density, 4%. And then what? Dark energy density parameter, mass density of dark energy in the universe divided by the critical density, 76%. So if you add this to this to this, it's got to equal that. Okay? Now, these numbers have been updated since this data table. And if you go online, you're going to see some different, slightly different numbers. But no matter what this is, this plus this plus this has to equal that. 24 plus 4 is 28. Oh, sorry, no, sorry. Uh, this plus this must equal that. This 4% is part of the 24. Okay? So if you get rid of that, 76 plus 24 should equal 1. Yeah, that makes sense. 76 plus 24. Of the 24, 4% 4 is ordinary matter. That's what that means. Okay? So that's the way that those numbers work. I went online and I updated those numbers a little bit, tad bit, just to give, the, give you the latest numbers. So, out of this critical density one, ordinary matter and energy comprises only about roughly 5% of the total mass and energy of the universe. So all this stuff on the periodic table, sulfur, phosphorus, silicon, nitrogen, oxygen, all those things which make up stars, which make up planets, plus all of the electromagnetic energy of the universe, gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, radio waves, put them all together, it makes up 5% of the energy of the universe. All that, the periodic table, plus all that electromagnetic energy. Okay, isn't that weird? It just only makes up 5%. The rest of the stuff in the universe is two other categories of things known as dark matter, dark energy, okay? These two things we don't know about too well yet. I mean, you can go do your research on it, you can do your report number two on it, but you're gonna find that we are discovering, as we speak, we're discovering more and more about dark matter. We're discovering more and more about dark energy, but we're not there yet. It, it reminds me so much of Star Wars, may the force be with you, you know, the dark, the dark force.